Hello everyone, in this session we would look at the worksheet. The worksheet is a very common tool in the real world. Practically, all accounting and auditing software would include some sort of a worksheet. Now in accounting, what would the worksheet be used for? Well, we could use the worksheet to organize our data, combining the trial balance with the adjustments with the financial statements, and this is what you will see in this session. We'll track adjustments through the worksheet, ensuring that the necessary changes, like adjustments, accruals, and deferrals are applied correctly. It helps us catch errors and discrepancies because everything is on one page. We can see the full pictures. If we made an error, it will show us the error. It's much easier to catch when you have a worksheet. Now for auditors, which is beyond the scope of this course, but I want, I want to give you an idea, auditor use it to confirm adjustments and make sure everything is being applied consistently. It serves as a reference tool or as an audit trail because everything is in front of you and you can try to reference it, see where the evidence is located. And obviously overall, it enhances efficiency. It consolidates all the information on one page. For us today, we need to know the structure of a worksheet, which we would look at a structure of a worksheet. Now the structure of a worksheet could be an Excel sheet which is, this is what I did. I used an Excel, Excel sheet to prepare a worksheet. In the real world, that worksheet could be the result of a software output. It does not matter. It's one page, everything on that page, whatever you change on the worksheet will affect everything else. So everything is being connected. It's like a web. Let's go ahead and dive into the accounting worksheet. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. We will start with the trial balance that we've been working with throughout these lectures. And this is the unadjusted, unadjusted. Now in the prior sessions, we prepare several adjustments. At the end of these several adjustments, the accountant, the staff, the auditor, whoever's working with this trial balance, will prepare a worksheet, starting with the unadjusted trial balance. And this is what we saw on the prior slide. And there are certain accounts that have a beginning balance of zero. I added them because we're going to be added them to, this, to these adjustments. I'm going to go over each adjustment separately because we went over the adjustments. Then I'm going to give you an overview of the benefit of the worksheet. So we've, we're starting with the unadjusted trial balance. We're gonna have two columns, debits and credits for the adjustments. Then we're gonna arrive to the adjusted balances. And what we're doing is this. We would look at an account, for example, cash. We determine if there is an adjustment. If there's no adjustment, the same account will transfer. But I'm gonna go over these adjustments in the order that I prepare the adjustments for. I'm going to, for example, name them. This is adjustment one. This is adjustment two. This is adjustment three. And this is what I did. So this way, it's a continuation of the prior lessons. So starting with the first adjustment, the first thing we did is we adjusted prepaid. We credited prepaid, this account here, we credited prepaid and we debited insurance expense. So prepaid was 3,600. We reduced it by 100. The ending balance was, the adjusted balance was 3,500. Insurance expense, we started with zero. We adjusted insurance expense 100. We end up with 100 of insurance expense. This was the first adjustment. The second adjustment, we adjusted supplies. We reduced supplies of 2,000 and we recorded supplies expense of 2,000. This is adjustment two. So we went from 7,300 reduced by, reduced by 2,000 to 5,300. And we started supplies expense zero. We end up with 2,000. And those were prepaid adjustments. Then we booked, we booked depreciation. We debited depreciation expense. We credited. 
accumulated depreciation. So depreciation expense was zero. We debited depreciation expense. The ending balance is a depreciation expense of 333. And we credited accumulated depreciation. That's the starting point was zero. And the ending balance was 333. In transaction four, we adjusted unearned revenue. Unearned revenue was 2250. We earned 900. If you remember, 40% of that, 900. So we increased unearned revenue and we increased revenue by 900. Hold on a second. Why do I have revenues increased by 2200? Because revenue was subject to two adjustments. So we looked at the first one. There's another adjustment for 2000. We'll look at it shortly. So we debited unearned revenue, credited revenue, and as a result, we increased revenue by 900. Transaction five, we accrued salaries expense. We debited salaries expense, credited salaries payable. Salaries payable, the beginning balance was zero. We increased it by 300. Now, what we did is we also debited salaries expense 300. The starting point was 500. We increased it by three. The ending was 800. Then we increased account receivable, which was zero by 2000. This was transaction six. We debited account receivable and I'm going to change the colors here. Now, let's let's keep it the same. It's six and four. So notice uh, consulting revenue was adjusted twice. Now this, this is for the 2000. So we went from 6,300. We increased it by 2,900. The ending point was 9,200. And the other accounts were not adjusted. For example, equipment, 26,000. Accounts payable the same. Common stock did not change. Rental revenue was not adjusted. Dividend was not adjusted. And rent expense was not adjusted, as well as utilities. So what we did is we went from the unadjusted. So let me let, let's let, let's go through what we did. We went from the unadjusted. We prepared the adjustments in these two columns. Then we end up with the adjust adjusted balance. Now notice under the adjustments, the total debits should equal to total credits. Under the adjusted balance, if we added equal debits of equal credits, the adjusted will be total debits equal to total credits. This is the adjusted balance. Adjusted or final balances. Now from the adjusted balances, what we will do is we create two additional columns, one called an income statement account and one called the balance sheet. And what we do on the worksheet, we separate the income statement account from the balance sheet account. And the income statement account are revenues and expenses. Therefore, under the income statement, we have two columns, one debit, one credit, one for revenues and one for expenses. Now, if we add them up, usually they should not equal to each other. We're going to have a different amount of revenues from expenses. For example, here we have revenues of 9,400 in the column of credits and 4,651 of expenses. Now, the difference between those two numbers, obviously, what's the difference between revenues and expense is net income. So net income is 4749 4, uh, $4,749. Now this net income, we put it under the debit column and we'll take the, the debit column plus net income will give us 9400 Now they equal to each other. We'll do the same thing with the balance sheet. We add up all the debits, add up to 50832 uh, 50, all the credits, the balance sheet account, and under the debits, we add dividend. We will end up to be $46,083. So what we do now to make it balanced, we're going to take net income and add it to the equity section, part of the equity, because net income part of the equity, forty-seven forty-nine. Now total assets equal to 50832 which is liabilities and equity, which include net, net income. Now, what's the benefit of the worksheet? Now, we know what the worksheet looks like. Well, Here's, here are some benefits of the worksheet. And in the, in the real world, you do use the worksheet, specifically 10 column worksheet. Most software, accounting software will produce it for you. If not, accountant, what they do, they create their own, but most software will produce it for you. What's, what's the benefit? What's the, why would companies use the worksheet? For one thing, I hope you see this, you are seeing all the adjustments on one page. So you're seeing every adjustment that you make on one page, that's good. It's like a dashboard, dashboard for the whole company. Why is that important? That's as important because if I change a figure, if I change, if I happen to change my 
prepaid insurance, if I happen to change the adjustment, it's going to change the adjusted balance. It's going to change the balance sheet. It's going to change the adjusted balance. It's going to change the income statement. So all the accounts are inter interconnected and interrelated. Any slight change in any figures, it will affect the overall picture. Now, let me show you what does that mean. So remember, I told you net income is 47.49. What I'm going to do, I'm going to close the PowerPoint, open this Excel sheet and change a figure and show you as I change one figure, everything will change. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a mistake and rather than prepaid insurance, 100, let's assume someone made a mistake and went for 8,000. Let's see what happened if we made a mistake like this. What would happen to the figures? And this is the whole point. I want to show you what would happen so you would see the benefit of the balance sheet. So let's assume I, deb I debited insurance expense 1000 and I credited prepaid insurance as 1000 If a manager, if an audit manager is reviewing this, if an audit manager is reviewing this worksheet, they're going to immediately see that net income went down substantially after this change. So after this change, net income went down by $900. Now, if you are the manager, the auditing manager, you need to be, you'll have an idea that net income should be around 4,900. Why is net income went down to 3,800? So you could immediately see the effect. You could see what's the latest adjustment and go backwards. So let's go back because we did not really expense that much of insurance. So simply put, you can see everything on one page and one slight change will give the manager, the auditor, whoever in charge, whoever needs this information as a great dashboard. As I mentioned, most companies, most auditors, not most auditors, all auditors, they use a worksheet. So that's a starting point, one page, everything. When I started work, I still remember we had a physical worksheet, literally, like we had a physical worksheet. Somebody gave us a physical worksheet, like a trial balance on a paper, like accounting paper, like those large papers. What did we do? We took this information, inputted the information into a software, and we started the work now the good thing about uh, the good thing about this worksheet as well is even if you make if you go back and change because it's all interconnected a change a transaction you happen to change accounts payable you forgot a payment uh, and you uh, and you forgot a payment what we do is once you make that change, it will change accounts payable, same thing. It will change the balance. It will change everything. So everything is interconnected. Think of it as a dashboard. Think of it. It gives you an idea what your net income is. This is net income. You're going to see it later on the income statement. There's a lot of benefit to it. I hope this gives you a better idea, but what should you do now to learn more? Go to Farhat Lectures. In the next session, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this worksheet to prepare the closing entries and look at the financial statements but basically you already know what the financial statement would look like you have net income you have total assets so you have a great idea what should you do now go to farhat lectures once again complete multiple choice questions look at additional resources that's going to help you with your financial accounting auditing class um, cpa cma whatever you're studying for invest in yourself good luck farhat is always here to help and stay safe